Hey, what is going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. So in this tutorial, we're going to be creating an animated parallax, kind of like this. It's a little bit funky, but it's just really unique, I think, and uh, I think it's really easy to do, so I'll be showing you guys how to do this sort of thing. And we also will be doing a little transition at the end here, so you can move into your next, uh, I guess, parallax uh, sort of slide. Uh, but we'll be taking a look at some of this stuff, and let's go ahead and just jump right into this tutorial. So I already have a photo in here, resized down. What I'm going to do is go up to Layer, Pre-Compose with the photo selected, and we're going to go ahead and click Leave All Attributes in this comp, and we can call this one, uh, just call it one or something, and that'd be fine. So basically the reason why we did that, so if we double click this comp, we can now go in here and kind of replace this content with a... Uh, you know, whatever we want. So if we're not happy with this picture, we can change that out and it'll automatically update uh, in our main comp here. But anyway, let's go and grab the ellipse tool at the top here and go click here right in the middle and hold down command and shift on your keyboard on a Mac or control and shift on a PC and just draw, draw out a perfect circle, kind of like this. And then let's go and duplicate this layer, bring it to the bottom and we'll call this layer two. And then what we're going to do is hit MM on our keyboard, bring up the mask expansion, and we're going to go and increase the max expansion for this one. Maybe just make it like this big, like this, and maybe that's about like nine, almost a thousand pixels there. And <clears throat> let's make sure the first layer is selected, and we're going to go up to layer, layer styles, and we're going to add the inner shadow effect to here. And if we open up the inner shadow, we already have a few settings in here. Um, you might want to mess with the opacity a little bit, so about 61%. The distance, you want to increase the distance by a touch, maybe about 30, 40 uh, points there. And then the size, I have that at about 41. So that'll help separate the center point from the rest of our composition here. So what we'll do is hit R on our keyboard to bring up rotation for our first one here. And maybe add a keyframe, go to like four seconds or something, or just some point in your animation. Maybe we'll just do a little bit of a rotation there. So we'll have a slight animation. Go to like the end of your animation here, and we'll do something a little bit crazy like maybe turn it completely over. It doesn't really matter. I'm just, you know, really being experimental with this. You can do whatever you want. Uh, maybe also what we can do is hit S on your keyboard, add a keyframe for the scale, go to the end of the uh, animation here, six seconds, and scale it up towards us a little bit. So it'll kind of come right at us. And then we'll go to our second layer, add a keyframe for scale. Maybe we'll scale this one up by a touch, like maybe 30%. Go to the end of our animation, and we'll set this back down to 24%. And if we take a look here, as you can see, we're creating a little bit of a slight offset animation and it looks just nice. And then let's go ahead and move on to our next one. Let's duplicate the number two layer here, bring it down and let's go to the mask one and let's delete the mask. And then let's go and delete the scale here. Maybe set it back to our original position of 24%. And then let's go grab the uh, ellipse tool once again. And right from the center, we're gonna draw, draw out another uh, circular mask, kind of like so like this. And this one will have it scaled right towards the middle, so 24%, add the keyframe, move to six seconds, and we can scale this down just by a little bit, about 20%. And then we'll duplicate our picture one more time by taking number three, bring this one to the bottom, take the mask, and we will delete the mask, and make sure the scale is set right back at 24%, delete the scale keyframes, and then let's hit R on our keyboard to bring up rotation, add a keyframe for rotation, and maybe what we can do before we move anything, turn this completely upside down to like 180 degrees. And then go to the last keyframe here. And maybe we can just do a quick offset here. And maybe increase the scale just by a little bit if you see any of this cutting off your frame. And then maybe we go to number three again here. Let's make the this a little bit bigger. You know, the scale. So kind of like that. And if we want, we can grab, say, the inner shadow. Uh, just by copying it, go into the first one here and copy it, and then go to the, the third layer and just paste it on there. And that will kind of just help create some more separation between all of what we've done. And I think it looks really cool. So we, maybe now we can create some uh, 2D elements in here. Uh, so let's go to the beginning of our timeline here, and let's grab the ellipse tool once more, and let's bring up the title safes. You can bring up the title safes right here. And for right from the middle, hold down Command and Shift, or Control and Shift on the PC, and we'll draw out a perfect uh, stroke like this. In order to bring up the stroke, if you don't have that, uh, go right into the shape layer properties. You can delete the fill and go right into the stroke, set it to whatever color you want and bring down the stroke width to about maybe four or something like that. It doesn't really matter. 
This is, we're just creating some extra elements in here. And if you want, we can also animate this. So hit S and keyboard for the shape layer, add a keyframe for the scale, move it forward in time. And if you want it to uh, get a little bit bigger, just increase the scale just by a little bit. And then let's go and duplicate the shape layer. Let's go into the shape layer two properties, go into the contents, ellipse one, and go into the stroke. And let's uh, click the little plus symbol for the dashes. And let's also hit S on our keyboard to bring up the scale and just so we can see what we're doing here. And as you see, we kind of have these nice broken up dashes. If we go back into the shape layer two and go right into the contents, ellipse one, uh, stroke, and we go into the dashes here. So you can also increase the dashes, you can increase the offset, it doesn't really matter. And But let's go ahead and hit R on our keyboard to bring up rotation. And let's add a keyframe for rotation, go to six seconds, and let's just type a one X into there. And we'll have a very nice, you know, slight animation. And we also need to make sure we scale this <clears throat> correctly. So <clears throat> make sure set to 108%. And then there we will have our shape design. And maybe we can take the uh, solid uh, circle here, duplicate it, bring it to the top. And we'll make sure hit S on the keyboard. Make sure to select all the keyframes before scaling this. And, you know, maybe bring this to the outside maybe right here, and you do whatever you want. I keep saying that, but you really can. There's so many ways you can do this stuff, and I think that looks really awesome. And so, to really to put the final touches on this effect, we need to go up to Layer, New, Adjustment Layer, and let's go up to Effect, uh, Distort, and we're gonna use the Optics Compensation. And this is really where this effect is gonna come alive. So, uh, let's go add a keyframe for the field of view. Hit U on our keyboard to bring up the keyframes, and let's bring this keyframe to like six seconds the end of our animation and let's increase the field of view and this is where things will get really fun. Okay, so we just increased the field of view. So what we need to do is uh, check the reverse lens distortion. Let me go ahead and open this up here. Check that box right there and go continue to increase the field of view. And we in, uh, if we scrub through our timeline here, as you can see, we're kind of getting like this warping sort of perspective um, <clears throat> right into our uh, animation. And you can go really crazy with uh, you know, the optics compensation here. So I want to add some texture to this to kind of make it a little bit more interesting. I have some uh, lens dirt textures or also close to bokeh textures here. And I want to add this right into our uh, composition. You can download about 30 to 40 of these for free off of actionvfx.com. They also have a few other assets on here that are free. So you know why not go ahead and just download these to some cool stuff to have in your arsenal. And they're absolutely free. So... There's actionvfx.com. So, so let's go and drag this uh, texture right into here and let's set the transfer mode right to add. If you don't see the transfer mode, just uh, click the toggle switches and modes. And you can see it kind of blended in there nice and easy. And let's say, let's go to like two seconds here. Let's hit S on our keyboard to bring up the scale, add a keyframe for scale, move to like, you know, maybe four seconds or something, maybe three seconds, how about that? And let's just really bring this down in here. This will just drop right in there and just create a little bit more uh, detail for us. And then go to like six seconds and let's just have this scale down just by a touch. And you know, there we have a nice little interesting texture to our animation to make things just a little bit more interesting. And also let's go to our last layer here, go to effect blur and let's add the Gaussian blur effect. It kind of blurred out on the edge there. And just increase that just as much as you need to go. And then it'll kind of like blur out the edges a little bit. You know, it looks pretty cool. And then let's go and enable motion blur for all of our layers here. And then finally, if you say we want to animate this out, let's go and select all of our layers here, uh, pre-compose them. Just call it slide, you know, one or two. I'm going to just call it two because this is my second slide. And click OK. And then we need to go up to effect, uh, transition. And we're going to use the iris wipe. Where is it? There you are. And let's say we want this animation to start at, or transition to start at five seconds. Let's uh, go to the uh, add a keyframe for the outer radius. And if we increase this, we get this nice little triangle. And uh, move to six seconds here. And let's just increase this to this max, which is about right. Let's increase the iris points to eight. And now we take a look here. We kind of have like this diamond animating in here. And of course this is going the wrong way, or maybe it's not, it doesn't matter because we do have transparency there. So then we can come here and just drag in like another, uh, you know, image. And let's go ahead and transition right to it. And, you know, this can be cool, but I don't think it's like that clever of a transition. And then let's hit U on our keyboard for slide two. Take the keyframes here, right click them and click on keyframe assistance, time reverse keyframes. 
And then let's duplicate this slide, go to the bottom one here, delete the iris wipe, and set the track mat. If you don't see the track mat, toggle switches and modes, and set the track mat to alpha inverted map. So now if we scrub through here, we'll have our regular animation here, and then it'll kind of collapse on itself, kind of from the outside to the end. And we kind of created a nice little transition there. And if you followed along with the video, this is what you should have gotten. And I think it's really interesting. And, you know, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And please be sure to check me out on my social media networks. Those links in the description of this video. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching this video. And I hope you have a good day.